Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son. And give him the glory, great things he has done. Our kind and loving Father, we come to you again uh, this evening of thanksgiving again that you took care of us throughout the day and that you brought us safely here to your house of worship uh, we thank you lord for the preacher we thank you lord for everyone that's here lord we pray for the holy spirit that may you guide us lord open our hearts open our minds may we hear you speak to us lord may we be able to listen to your word and help us lord to be able to meditate upon it that it may change our lives and brings us closer to you forgive us of our sins we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, today we are getting in onto our second day of our prophecy crusade. We greet the church of God in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Question. Let's interact just a little bit. What is prophecy? What do you understand the prophecy to be? Yes, sir. When you are told of things to come. Okay, thank you. So if I sit with my brother and I meet him in town, he tells me things to come. That I'm going to divorce, I'm going to marry seven wives and all. That's prophets. What if it doesn't come to pass? Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and preach. He was given a prophecy. It didn't come to pass. Nineveh was to be destroyed, but it was not destroyed because they, 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 <laughs> they, they, they converted. Amen. I, I think it's true. Prophecy, it's what God says in Deuteronomy, I think it's chapter 13, that if a prophet comes and tells you things and those things comes to pass, you must know that I am the Lord who sent that prophet. But even if it comes to pass, but that prophet tells you that let's worship another God, you must know that's not a true prophet. Amen. Not only pro false prophets are prophesying false. Are you together? Other prophets, they can tell you and things happen, yet they are false prophets. To be a true a prophet, true prophet. Dependent as true. If the source is God, you are a true prophet. If the source is the opposer of God, you are a false prophet. Remember, Satan was not of his power. Are we together? So he still have those powers. And those who still believe in miracles woe unto you. For there's a warning that. Uh, uh, when you see all these things happening, miracles, false Christ, false Christ will arise in these last days and they will perform signs and wonders. You, you remember what is the purpose of a miracle? The purpose of a miracle is to let an unbeliever believe to believe. So when you believe, you don't need a miracle. Are we together? So that is why in Matthew 24, Christ is warning believers that we should not be miracle lovers. Are we together? Uh, usually, uh, we have our theme song. We have our, I, I usually have theme text that I would like us to share. It's from tomorrow. All of us will get, will get used to our theme text, okay? 
2 Timothy 2.15. I think it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the weight of truth. Amen. Can we be good students and go and revise it so that we sing it together? It becomes our, our, te- our theme text. The second one will be the one in the book of Acts, chapter 17, 11. Right. Uh, uh, those of Thessalonica were more noble than the Berians were of a more noble character than those of Thessalonica in that they received the weight with all readiness of heart and search the scriptures daily. Whether those things are so. So it's a challenge that don't believe whatever I say, but go search the scriptures and ask where did you get what you said. And not, don't do it to me only, to everybody who will say, thus says the Lord. Is that a fair game? Can we start playing it tomorrow? That when we come here, we start with Second Timothy. When I come in, I say Second Timothy, let's go study to show thyself approve unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the weight of truth. Then we come to the second one. Amen. A prophecy is when God opens a curtain, allow his children in the present to see the future. So that when things come from the future perspective, you are not worried. You are not troubled. Are we together? For you are aware, you are forewarned, therefore you are forearmed. And that's what Christ did to his disciples. That I'm about to depart. This will happen to you. They will do this to you. You will pass through t- tribulation and all these things. And when those things started happening, their faith increased. So the purpose of studying prophecy is to prepare for what is about to come. Amen. The book of Daniel, yesterday we went through chapter 1. Today we are going to chapter 2. And let's, 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 let's go to a class a little bit. Amen. The, when you study prophecy, especially we'll see when we go to the book of Revelation, there is something we called a springboard text. Are we together? A springboard text. It is a text in a passage or in a chapter that summarizes the entire chapter at the same time introduces the following chapter. Can I repeat that? A springboard text. It's a text or text in a chapter that summarizes this chapter at the same time introduces the chapter that's coming. Can, can, can I see the hands of those who were here yesterday? I don't want to raise your hands. I want to ask you difficult questions. Amen. Thank you. Yesterday, there are a few things we went through. And those verses are a springboard text for today. Number one, you remember a gentleman by the name of Melza, the chief eunuch, who said to Daniel, hey, you'll put my life in danger. That man informed us of something. Number one, he taught us that Nebuchadnezzar is called Mr. Take No Nonsense. Are we together? So by reading what he said, you understand the character of Nebuchadnezzar. If Nebuchadnezzar says to you, stand up, you don't stand up, you will never stand up for the rest of your life. If he says, sit down, you don't sit down. You won't be able to sit down, but your body will go down underground. That's Nebuchadnezzar. He never believed in second chances. Nebuchadnezzar, when he says, do this, and you don't, he, he, he starts by giving warning what I like about him. Do this. If you do right, uh, uh, you will get gifts from me. If you do wrong, 
you will be cut into pieces and your houses will be turned into a dunghill. He doesn't only kill you. He kills you, your wife, your children, your cows, your chicken, your dogs. He leaves your house being a dunghill. That's not Ketnezah. Amen. And that we, we, we picked up with males are saying to Daniel, Amen, you'll put my life in danger. This is from the king. Springboard number two. That one I would like to read from Daniel chapter one. Verse quickly. Daniel chapter one, starting from verse 17. I hope my brothers are getting ready as well. Daniel chapter 1, verse 17. 17, 1, 7. Yes. Going says, down. From King James Version, it says, As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Did you hear that? Daniel had what? In what? In all visions and dreams. Please underline that. Because from here, going down to chapter 12, you will find that indeed Daniel is using his gift. And the wisdom and skill that they were given by God, they used it for the glory of God. Amen. Let's continue, my brother. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. Therefore stood there before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Amen. Amen. That's very important for chapter 2. Because this thing is working in the mind of Nebuchadnezzar up until Daniel. Daniel corrects him in chapter 2. We'll pick that up. Amen. Let's start with Daniel chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Daniel chapter 2. Or rather, I, I'm not sure. Are, are, we, are we going to be able to read fast? Daniel chapter 2, verse 1. Are you verse 1? No, but I see. Daniel chapter 2. There are my brothers who were given. Oh, it's you, my elder. Oh. Okay. Chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. And okay. remember, I may disturb you at any time. Sorry? So don't be offended. I may disturb you during the process when the spirit leads. So okay. it will not be me, it's the spirit. If you want to fight, fight the spirit, not me. <laughs> Amen. No problem. It's okay. Daniel chapter 2, from verse 1, reading from New King James Version. Now, in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians, the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I have had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants a dream, and we will give the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, Magician is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made an ash heap. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, and great honor. That's verse 6. Yes. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. They answered again and said, let the king tell his servant the dream and we will give it inter interpretation. The king answered and said, I know for certain that you will gain time because you see that my decision is firm. If you do not make known, to, to make known the dream to me, there is only one degree for you. 
For you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time has changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can Please tell the note king. their answer. There is no what? There is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of a magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. It is a difficult thing that the king requests, and there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods, wow. whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this reason, the king was angry and very furious and gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Amen. So the decree went out and they began killing the wise men and they sought Daniel and his companions Thank you, to, my to kill them. That's verse 13. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That's up to verse. I, I, my intention was you stop at verse 13. 13. Yes. That's 13. That's 13. Amen. Did you pick something up? In chapter 1, we picked up that the king is Mr. Take No Nonsense. In chapter 2, he has a dream. And he called his magician, his astrologers, his soothsayers. They are classified under an umbrella of the wise men. He brings his wise men. He says to them, I had a dream. Please tell me the dream and its interpretation. They said, no, king, tell us the dream. We will come with the interpretation. Are we together? I nearly said something. Tell us the dream. We will come with the interpretation. He says, but the thing is gone from me. He had a dream that he could not forget. Neither could he remember the dream. But he knows that he had a dream so important that he needed not to forget it, but he cannot remember it. When God deals with humanity, when God wants you to forget, you will forget Joseph in prison for two years. That's God. Having made a vow or a covenant, that my brother, please, when you go to the king, mention my name. You go out, you suffer a forgetfulness of life. That's God, for the time is not yet. So Nebuchadnezzar forgets. He calls his wise men. God is working to change Nebuchadnezzar. That the wise men that he trusts so much are lying to him. Tell me the dream. O oh, king, live forever. There is no man who can give what the king requires except the gods who do not dwell in the flesh. The king was so angry. And he is fair. In verse 5, if you don't, you will die. In verse 6, if you do, gift. You see, babes like God in Deuteronomy 28. You do this, I bless you. You do this, you get cursed. You do this, you live. You do that, you die. So Nebuchadnezzar says, tell me the dream. No, 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 O king. There is no man. If it was today's language, the wise man could have said, this is an abuse at its best. There's no one who's ever asked such a thing. It's a rare thing that you ask. There's no king, there's no lord, there's no ruler who's asked such a thing from his subject. In short, you are abusing us. The king said, let them all be killed. And the message came to Daniel. Are we together? That's where we ended. Number two? Who's number two? Uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was going forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said unto him, Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arion, Arioch made the thing known to da Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time 
and that he will show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they will desire the message of God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his followers should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. Do you pick up something? If I were Daniel, knowing who I deal with, I would have said to Lord, please, is it true what you are giving? Because if I go to stand before that man and I start interpreting and it's not, I'm gone. But listen to Daniel. He is a man of faith. He has not yet confirmed with the king, but he's praising his God. For he believes his God is the true God. Amen. I would have suffered me of little faith. Or I would have stood at a distance and said, King, you had this, this, checking the, the response of the king. If he was responding positively, then I could boldly then come closer. But the man of faith praises God even before he went to the king. My brother. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For his wisdom and might for wisdom and might are his. He changeth the time, the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up, setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth in him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God, of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast made known unto us the king's matter. Verse wow. 24. Thou had made known to us the king's matter, even before he appears before the king. But I would like us to pick up Ariok. Did you pick up that man is wise? He understood verse 5 and 6. And that man also, he trusted Daniel. Because when he came before the king, he lied. You will pick up when number 3 is reading. Amen. He lied because he appears before the king. And when he appears, he says, I have found a man. Did he found Daniel? Was he looking around? You know why he's saying that? He is leaning to Daniel, knowing that Daniel is a man of faith and Daniel is telling the truth. So Daniel is going to benefit by verse 6. So when Daniel benefits, he gets the, the benefits as well. But that's dangerous also because had Daniel spoken lies, he was the first one to be killed. For he said, I found a man. Number 3. Or maybe, or oh, it's you, my brother. Maybe before we go there, for the sake of time and summary, these guys, they come before the king. And they say to the king, there is no man who can tell what the king requires. So imagine the mind of Nebuchadnezzar. He knows that it is impossible. There is no man. The one who can come and tell him are gods who do not dwell in the flesh. Keep that in mind. Amen. Verse 24. Then Daniel went into Ariok, whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show the king the interpretation. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste. Listen to this. And said thus to him, I have found among the exiles from Judah a man who will make known to the king the interpretation. If you were a king, and you are in trouble, you hear your servant talking like this. He, he acts as if he was not sleepy. He was suffering together with the king. So he wanted a man. When indeed he never, it is Daniel who came to him. His mission was to kill everyone. 
But Daniel said to him, but why such a haste from the king? And the man explained to him, and Daniel requested time. Are we together? He requested time, and he called his companions. They went, and they prayed. What? Where are praying people in the days of our lives? Where when there are issues and tissues of life, people go down on their knees, and things happen. Amen. Daniel answered the king and said, No wise men, enchanters, magicians, or astrologers can show to the king the mystery and that the king has asked. But there is a God in heaven who reveals Please, mystery. Take, take, take the sequence of this man, the manner in which he's explaining. Remember, when the king suffered from this dream, who did he call first? The astrologers. The, that's where he is studying. No astrologer, no... And listen to his sequence. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the later days. Your dream and the visions of your head as you lay in bed are these. To you, O king, as you lay in bed came thoughts of what would be after this. And he who reveals... My brother, wait. I don't ask, ask, ask to miss that. The king wanted the explanation of the dream. Daniel does not deal with the symptom. He deals with the root cause. Are we together? Yesterday, we started with the root cause of these guys being taken to captivity. Today, we are dealing with the root cause of the dream. The king only wanted to know the dream. Daniel is saying to him, the cause of the dream is because when you were sleeping in your bed, troubled as to who is coming next, then the God of heaven showed you this. But as for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because of any wisdom that I have more than all the living. Can we be humble as, people, as God's people? It, it is not because of my wisdom. You see the sequence. He, he, he took out in the equation the wise men of Babylon. Then I think the king was saying, oh, by the way, you are 10 times intelligent. You, you qualify. Then Daniel says, no, as for me, it's not because of my wisdom. He takes glory to God, not to himself. Amen. But in order that the interpretation may be made known to the king and that you may know the thoughts of your mind. You saw, O king, and behold, a great image. This image mighty and of exceeding brightness stood before you. Please and see this image in your mind. Can I have you, my L? See the image in your mind. Next time you greet a person, you must know. Too late. You are greeting Medopatia. You are greeting Medopatia. <laughs> we should be greeting each other like this. <laughs> For this is the period in which we live. Every time you see a man, Babylon is gone. Medopatia, Greece, Rome, Rome, broken into ten. Actually, not, yeah, ten toes. That is Rome broken into ten, ten kingdoms or ten nations. Are we together? So every time now I, I come and say Saubona, I should be saying Medopesh. <laughs> Till you say, then I'll say the broken kingdoms. Amen. This image, mighty and of exceeding brightness, stood before you, and its appearance was frightening. The head of this image was of fine gold. Please don't miss this, especially those who are studying prophecy deeply. Because here you will be told gold, silver, bronze, iron, iron mixed with clay. And when you'll be reading the book of Revelation, a verse that many people, including uh, 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 learned people in theology, that's troubling them. Amen. The book of Revelation 17. The one is, the one is not, the one is not yet to come, is the fifth and is one of the seventh. The calculation starts from here. For the book of Daniel, it's a key to open the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation is explaining the book of Daniel. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
The head of this image was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its middle and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. Uh, then, uh, as you looked, a stone was cut out by no human hand, and it struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron and clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold all together were broken in pieces and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Amen. Can, can we stop here for the sake of time? Amen. And believe whatever I'm to say up until you go and check it in the scriptures, whether I said it according to the scripture. Amen. So the king is sitting in his throne. Daniel is coming with Ariok, And Ariok said, I found the man. The king always said, oh, you, you found the man. When he appears, Daniel says, no, I, I, there is a God in heaven. It's not me. It's not because of the wisdom I have. But God will show the king the dream and its interpretation. Then he started explaining. Uh, the head. You saw this huge image that was so terrible. Its brightness. It was the head of gold, chest of silver, brass, iron partly clay and partly iron. And while you were still looking at this image, there was a stone that, was, that came from the mountain without a man's hand that struck the image. Question, where did the stone strike? Why didn't it strike the head? Why not the chest? Why not the legs? It went straight to the feet. And as he is explaining, it is said that Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind. Because remember, Nebuchadnezzar was told, there's no man who can tell. That is why when Daniel came, he says, are you able? Because he was expecting the God, but he saw a man. And previously, the, he, he was told, there is no man who can tell the king the dream and its interpretation, except the God who do not dwell in the flesh. But now here comes a man dwelling in the flesh, coming before the king, telling the king what the king heard when the man was not there. And Nebuchadnezzar, if you are to study and understand Nebuchadnezzar, remember, he does not respect anybody. He conquered many people. So he was in charge. So he never in his life bowed before a man. But this time, when Daniel, after Daniel interpreted the dream, go and study your Bible, Nebuchadnezzar bowed down. What does that mean? Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilling the prophecy. Remember, he's the head of gold. And when you bow, it says he bowed down. When you bow down, your head has got to be on the ground. He was saying, indeed, Babylon is going down. Medopatia down. All these kingdoms, because you cannot bow down and remain in a vertical way. So he bowed down as a sign of saying, indeed, uh, this prophecy will be fulfilled. He was not bowing down to Daniel, but he was bowing down to the God of Daniel who revealed the mystery. And he believed. That is why thereafter he said, bring up the nation. Let us sacrifice to the God of Daniel. And there, there should be no other God who's worshipped except the God of Daniel. And he promoted Daniel. Daniel became the prime minister of Babylon. And when he became the prime minister of Babylon, Daniel said to the king, I am not alone. We were four praying. And they were also given position. Are we together? Tomorrow, we will be dealing with these three that are given a position. My advice to you, please, when you get a chance, I know you are busy. You are living in the busy world. Please visit chapter three. Let's go deeper to chapter 3 tomorrow 
as the days are going by, let's go deeper in prophecy. Go and check something. Because our title for tomorrow is The Fourth Man Challenged. And the fourth man that is challenged will appear tomorrow. Amen. May the good Lord bless us. Amen. We can stand and pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord God Almighty, we thank you, Lord, for a show weight of prophecy. That, Lord, all the things that you pointed that will happen, indeed, they are happening in the days of our lives. We are witnesses, Lord, of all these things. Disobedience of children. Lovers, Lord, of money who kill their wives, their husbands for the sake of money. Life, Lord, has tended to become nothing for people are lovers of money more than lovers of God. Lord, we thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, to stick closer to thee like never before. Above it all, help us, Lord, to study your weight all the days of our life till thou comest with the clouds of heaven. Lord, as we'll be going to our different place of abode, bless us, Lord, protect us on the road. Be with us till we meet again tomorrow to hear your word. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Yeah, it's going to be um, like this uh, for the next coming uh, week or so. Uh, each day builds to the next day, right? We saw yesterday he started and today we did another part. Tomorrow again it's just going to continue up until um, the crusade is ended. Um, Tenders when he 